What is good? Welcome back to the God's Vibes podcast. We're talking victim mindset today. Don't let that freak you out, but that is where we're going. Now, here's the thing. We don't just wake up one day and we're like, you know what? Today, I really want to embrace a victim mindset. This is not something that we intentionally choose, but it is something that we get to. And we're going to talk about how you might have stumbled here, what exactly it means to be living under the influence of a victim mindset, and what it might look like for you to step out of that, what that will require of you so that you can stir up, muster up the courage to break up with a victim mindset if you so choose. Now, I also fully want to acknowledge that you might not be ready. And over here, we don't play the blame, shame, guilt game at all. We, we, don't, we don't vibe with that at all over here. No guilt, shame, condemnation, none of that. No good, bad, right, or wrong. Just clear information for you to show up differently and level up if you so choose, because ultimately that is a choice. Now, you have to be two things. One, you've got to be ready. Two, you've got to be willing. It's one thing to be ready to receive information, to be open to learning something new. It's another thing entirely to be willing to integrate new information, new education, new tools, new skills into your reality, which is where real transformation happens. Okay? So you've got to be ready and you've got to be willing. You've got to be both to really embrace transformation in your life. And sometimes we think we are, and then we're like, whoa. Maybe I'm not, right? And that's okay. You are on an evolving journey. But let's talk about it. Being a victim, I just want you to think about what comes up for you when you think about that word or when you hear that word, okay? When you hear the word victim, what do you think of? A definition, if you will, because our brains come up with very interesting things. A dictionary definition says that a victim is a person that is harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. It's a person who has been tricked or duped, and there can be many other synonyms to this. So if you want to hear some other words too, it's somebody who is a sufferer. It's somebody who is a loser. That's another word. It's somebody who is a fool. And it's somebody who is sometimes a scapegoat is another word. Okay? So having this victim mindset, this isn't something that we walk around again thinking that we have or that we actively, consciously choose. Okay? This mindset is a acquired personality trait. It's something that's patterned into our being where we tend to recognize or consider ourselves a victim of things that have happened in life, of others, of their actions, of circumstances that have happened that we had nothing to do with, that we didn't contribute to necessarily, that we didn't initiate, that we didn't create, right? And we then start to live like this person that is a victim of other people's actions, of their circumstances, of different things that are happening in our life, okay? So we may dramatize events. We may learn helplessness. We may fixate on negative events and trauma, There may be a lack of empathy, low self-esteem, a need and sometimes a desperation for attention, blaming others for our actions or for, for their actions, being easily angered, irritated, or agitated, having a lot of self pity and thinking that people are just better off without you. So most often, Someone that is engaging with, partnering with a victim mentality is someone who genuinely believes that they are powerless in their own lives. 
They blame others for any adversities they encounter, and they feel like no matter what, they will always encounter bad luck. And this mentality, this mindset, what the mind is set on, can be incredibly frustrating for people around this person and really negatively impact that individual's day-to-day functioning, okay? So really important to recognize what this is and when it's operating. Now, victim mindsets can, can happen from different things in life. So for example, even in my own life story, I learned that life was brutal, right? I had a sense of learned helplessness myself. I had a lot of feeling powerless because so many things were happening as a young person that were outside of my control and that I was powerless to change. And that's a very helpless feeling. Now, if you add neglect, betrayal, abandonment, trauma, and so many other things to that, which definitely happened in my life story, you can feel like a victim of life because that is what life is showing you. It's showing you that we don't know what we're doing. Humans don't have this figured out. Crazy things keep happening. It's not going to get better. So you better figure out how to preserve and protect yourself because that's that's the way out of this thing. That's how you make it, right? So we often learn to self-protect. There's a, a phrase, right, for this called self-preservation. But we learn to protect ourselves from things that freak us out, from harm, from loss, from pain in most cases, right? This is a human instinct. We learn to preserve ourselves, to survive, okay? So we really want to avoid situations that make us uncomfortable, that make us feel like we're out of control, that make us feel very uneasy, right? So we try to preserve and protect ourselves and we start operating outside of who we're actually formed, shaped, and anointed to be. And this is often where self-sabotage can come into play too. We start developing some really weird patterns out of trying to protect ourselves. And then sometimes people call that personality, okay? So really, really interesting, really interesting if you think about this, right? But we don't always consider, one, that this is operating, two, what it's costing us, and what it looks like to get out of it. So some examples, right? Learned helplessness from my own story. I was raised in a home where my father was a workaholic, right? He just wanted to provide for the family. He definitely came from that generation too, where that's what you do, right? Like one of the ways that you show love is providing for your family. So he was working all the time, never really saw him, no emotional connection, no relationship, but there was at least some form of structure and provision in a sense, right? Then my adoptive mother was very much struggling with alcoholism, like out of control, very, very scary, who would she would become, just violent, crazy things, what, what she was capable of, right, when she was under the influence of alcohol. So lots of unrest and discontent, right? So you wouldn't know from day to day what it would look like when you're getting off the bus. You wouldn't know who's going to be there, who's not, if if this person is sane or not. Like you just don't know what's going to happen in that space. So you're sort of anticipating the worst and and bracing yourself for the worst. And and that sort of environment was what I was groomed in as early as 9, maybe even a little bit earlier than that. So I was learning how to protect my younger sister at the time, who was seven and a half years younger, and I was learning how to not really show up as what my older sister at the time had been doing, and she was really choosing to get away and to rebel, and she was really craving and crying out for love, but she was looking for it in all the wrong places, the wrong crowds, you know, the wrong attention from school, just acting out, rebelling, all the things. And I knew that from what she was demonstrating, that was not the path. (laughs) But 
I was trying to preserve and protect my own well-being. So I started learning things like, oh, don't say anything. Keep the attention off you. Be quiet. Don't have any needs. Make sure that you take care of your mom. Make sure that you know you get your homework done. Make sure that you get good grades so that there's no attention on you or you only have like praise or like you're actually a relief and not a burden, right? Like I was learning and absorbing all of these things because I was powerless to change the things that were already out of control. So the only value that I thought I could add was protecting my younger sister from the chaos and then, you know, buffering my my older sister to some degree, but but trying to follow a different path right? Doing well in school, excelling in athletics, like really trying to to search for and push for a new way. But at the same time, I felt helpless, right? Like it was, it was scary. I would say that I was living with a lot of anxiety. I just didn't know, you know, what that, what that was. I probably was very high functioning. I had a lot of energy and I was learning how to channel it in different ways. But what I was learning was how to base my days off of the behavior of of other people. I was learning how to perform in ways that got praise or that, you know, had no attention. I could not have negative attention. Like, my soul could not bear it, right? And it was very, very interesting programming that if you fast forward that, if you fast track that later in life, it makes you really susceptible to dysfunctional relationships where you don't have boundaries, where you're a magnet for abuse, where you always put the other person before yourself, where you are blind to red flags. (laughs) You're almost, well, this is sort of normal. Like chaos has been my norm. Like I just know what to do with this, even though it's unhealthy and I'm worthy and deserving of real love. Like this, I know what to do in and I know how to operate in. So we'll just go with it. Right. And you, you can really find yourself in some very unhealthy dynamics, right? Also in the workplace, this makes you a target for takers for uh, bosses that really need somebody to be a workhorse and useful with all the things that they consider such. And it can really run you into the ground because you're just working for approval, let's say, that you never got. Or you're working to please somebody that can't be pleased. They're not even happy, right? They're miserable and they're needing you to be their scapegoat, right? So you can really find some very uncomfortable and ugly situations when you believe that you are a victim in your life. Now, there may have been reasons, like you might have actually been a victim of a situation. You might have suffered from an abusive relationship, right? This is, this is not what you're worthy of. This is not what you deserve. That is not right in any sort of way, right? Right? But where that can get tricky is now you believe that you're a victim, right? And you identify, you form an identity around that. Or, you know, some of the things that were happening in my life, because it just kept getting worse, like life sucks, (laughs) could have been the message, right? And it doesn't get better, it gets worse, right? So you're constantly bracing yourself and trying to preserve yourself to protect yourself from harm, to protect yourself from disappointment, to protect yourself from loss, to protect yourself from rejection, to protect yourself from so many things that we project protect ourselves from. You try to do that, and that becomes your your patterning, your way of being, your way of showing up in the world. And when we don't investigate this, when we don't challenge this, This becomes our life experience. This becomes normal. It's just normal to have a victim mindset. Everybody does. But no, (laughs) that's not true. Again, you could have been an actual victim of circumstance, meaning this really, really wrong situation happened. This injustice happened. This unforeseen event happened, right? You could have legitimately been a victim of a circumstance, but that doesn't make you a victim of life. That doesn't make you a victim, period, right? You could have experienced something, right? But that doesn't necessarily make you a victim, 
Okay. Now you also have life experiences that happen that can reinforce this because that's sort of what happens when we have an experience that we didn't cause. You know what I mean? There's just evil. There's wickedness in the world. We didn't cause it. If we take on that victim mentality, if we take it on so much so that it forms our identity, that shapes our entire being and our life. It's literally the way we view life. Okay, and then that's why we start preserving and self-protecting and all of that. We have to embrace self-preservation to protect ourselves from dangerous people, a dangerous world life, right? And it's all about the narrative and that the story that we have, okay? So it, it's wild, all right? And if you don't recognize that this is happening, this is sometimes why we keep repeating patterns because we don't realize that we've taken on a victim mentality and now it's literally seeding itself in everything, in our work environments, in our relationship, in our family, in our business. We just don't have responsibility. We don't have accountability. We don't take ownership. We're a victim. We're powerless to change things. We have learned helplessness. So when any anything happens that doesn't match our expectation or that's out of our control, our whole world falls apart and it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that. But you can very much identify somebody that's embracing or somebody that's partnering with, somebody that's choosing a victim mindset, a victim mentality by even what they're saying. Okay, you can see this in what people write in emails. You can see this in what people are talking to you about. You can see this in what they're posting about. You can see it. It's almost like if it were a scent, you could smell it. Okay? So it's really important. The enemy of your soul wants you to be a victim. That's actually his agenda. God does not. God says you're a victor, not a victim. So the enemy of your soul wants you to be a victim. He wants you to learn powerlessness and helplessness so that you don't get the guts to one day wake up to who you actually are and walk out the fullness of who God form shaped and anointed you to be. Because why would he want you to do that? That would be the worst thing for him. That would be his worst nightmare, which is why that is why you absolutely have to wake up and embrace a victor mindset. You don't have to keep choosing to be a victim just because you were and identified as a victim in a circumstance or in a situation or in a relationship. That doesn't mean that that is your identity and that that is your future. Okay. Doesn't minimize anything that's happened in your life. That doesn't make it right. But your future requires a victor. Okay. Your future requires a victor, and that DNA is on the inside of you, and it's something that you can activate. No matter how long you've embraced a victim mindset, no matter how long that's blocked you, no matter how long that's been perpetuated by things that you may have been thinking, feeling, deciding, partnering with, relating to, all of those things, committing to, you still can activate a victor mindset and your life is still out ahead of you. The best is still yet to come, okay? So I know for me, I had been struggling with an eating disorder that I couldn't shake for many years. This definitely was an addiction. I was powerless to change this. This was how I had learned helplessness in college. And it was something that in many ways was hidden. I mean, I had the... the, gusto, the, the, the gumption, the guts to, to tell people that I was suffering, right? And I had a lot of betrayals and abandonment and lots of shame thrown on me because of that, which made it even worse. Um, however, in order to, to shake that, to walk that out, I had to believe that I wasn't a victim. I had to accept that I was choosing to suffer, that I was choosing to my to make my life way harder than it needed to be. And while I couldn't control things that had happened to me, while I couldn't go back and make wrong things right, while I couldn't resolve the injustices, right, I could choose how I was going to show up for my future. 
all right? And that was really hard because at that point in time in my life, I didn't have a solid vision of the future. I didn't have a solid identity. I didn't know where I was going. And that was keeping me in this chokehold. I was powerless to, to change what I was dealing with. I was very freaked out about the future and what success looked like. It just seemed like I kept learning everything that I didn't want or life just kept getting harder. There was no, you know, reprieve for for years, 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 years. And so the future did not look bright at all. It looked very intimidating. And I kept creating a case for why that was true and why it was going to be hard and why it wasn't going to get better. And when you suffer relationally too, that just compounds the pain. And I definitely was. I had so many people walk out of my life in that season that, you know, claimed to, to love me and would support me and do anything for me and definitely wasn't true when given the opportunity and it was brutal, right? But at some point, I had to decide nobody is coming to save you. At this point, nobody is able to cause you as much pain as you cause and bring on yourself. And you can stop the unnecessary suffering, if you're willing to see things differently. And so this was one of the times that I really just wanted to start learning who I was. Who am I? Why am I why am I here? Like what is what is what is the point? <laughs> what is this all about so that I can shake this? Like I need something worth living for, right? Like I've lived for all these other people my whole life and now I don't know what my life is about when they when they don't need me and suddenly I'm out of sight, out of mind. Like, what am I going to show up and do now? Like, what is life about? And it took me many years to, to really navigate that question, who am I, right? And it wasn't until I came into relationship with my creator that I could decide and realize more so, decide who I'm going to be, but really realize who that is. I had no idea who I was apart from God, right? And I fully knew in my being that apart from God, I am nothing. And apart from God, I can do no good thing, right? But I couldn't navigate the unknown without God. I couldn't do it. So I just want to help you understand that this powerlessness This is an agenda of the enemy for sure, to keep you helpless in your life and to to never come into a knowing and a conviction on who you are because that would make you powerful and that's the last thing he wants you to be. He doesn't want you having impact. He doesn't want you taking territory. He doesn't want you breaking generational curses. He doesn't want you releasing generational blessings. It's not what he wants at all. So usually he does seed some sort of reason for you to believe that you're a victim early on in your life and then just reinforces that so that you won't choose the narrative where you are the victor so that you won't partner with God, okay? So you can though, I have found, go from victim to victor with God. You can go from self-preservation to mission, okay? You can go from helplessness to purpose, okay? From pain to power. These are, these are all leaps, courageous leaps, if you will, that you can make. And if you're not a part of Courage Co., we talk about how to live your most courageous and impactful story every single day. Okay, so this is a free community, www.couragecoke.org, but it's all about building a community of people that are making courageous decisions every single day. Because when you're surrounded by people that are doing it, you start activating the guts to show up in your own life too. Okay, but truly when you partner with God, I have found that this is when you start getting revelation about who God is, about who you are, about how he's designed you, about the desires that he's put in your heart, about the way he's gifted you, about the purpose and plans that he has for you. You're not aimless anymore. You actually are rooted and grounded in someone, not just something. You're rooted and grounded in someone, okay? So a victim mindset is, again, I'm helpless, I'm powerless, life is happening to me, not for me. 
a victor mindset is I am made in the image and likeness of the creator. I am creative. I am creating my reality. I am powerful. The spirit of God that dwells on the inside of me has given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above only, never beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower. My gifts make room for me, right? Like it's a very different way of operating. Even when life still happens, you have a very different way of showing up because of who you're connected to, okay? So when you are connected to God, you can start activating not only your identity, you can start activating power, you can start activating the ability, the grace, the divine enablement to start transforming your life, all of it, (laughs) okay? And you'll start making bold moves. And some of these might look like in the beginning. So I know for me, when I I was instantly delivered, I one day was like, listen, God, I have been fighting with this addiction for years. I'm accumulating a lot of guilt for how I'm wasting my life. I have a lot of shame for how I'm showing up. I have a lot of embarrassment for what I feel like I'm hiding, even though I've been honest about that with people. I feel a lot of hurt that I am not able to change any of this, right? And I don't like the modeling behavior. I'm not like, I don't like what I'm showing, right? The very things that I was always afraid of, it's almost like I became those, right? Like I became somebody like an alcoholic who's a victim of circumstances, right? Like I became somebody that's a workaholic who that's the only thing I know to do to be valuable is just work hard, right? I can't keep this going. I can't just be the person in relationship that gives, gives, gives and ends up with nothing. But, you know, a lot of things that are not okay, dishonor, disrespect, betrayal, abandonment, cheating, heartache, heartbreak, right? Like this is not, this is not my movie, (laughs) right? Like this is not, this is not it. Like I, I just know inherently that there's more, but I know if it's up to me, I can't make that happen. And I need you to take this ugly, gross, addiction, this dis-ease, literally all of this lack of ease in my life, take it from me and help me to do what's required to change my life so that I can live it the way you've designed me to, not the way I think I have to. Because what do I know, right? So I prayed a prayer in, in the quiet darkness of my home. Nobody else there. Nobody knew I did this. I just did it, you know, silent. Well, out loud in that room, but I didn't know. I didn't know God at this point, didn't have a relationship with God, didn't know any of that. And then literally the best way you can describe it is I woke up the next day and this addiction was gone. Gone. G-O-N-E, gone. Like it was just gone. Like the, the grip that was there, the heaviness that was there, the anxiety that was there, all of that was gone. It was gone. And, and I suddenly started feeling, now it was hard, right? Because here's the thing. While the addiction could be gone in an instant, right? Just gone, right? While that is true, the patterns that I developed were still very much there in the sense of like that addiction was a crutch for not feeling. That addiction was a crutch for um, numbing um, and avoiding dealing with these unhealed parts of myself. It was a crutch for so many things I didn't want to acknowledge. I didn't want to deal with it all. Now... What God started to do is he started giving me these pattern replacements, these pattern shifts, right? So that I went and I started, instead of just thinking about myself and obsessing about myself, God put me in service, okay? So now I have to show up many hours every week to serve people, you know, that are in worse worse places than me for sure, which is definitely eye-opening, right? And he's having me show up and serve. He's giving me tools to redefine how I take care of my body, how I sleep, what I eat, how I move my body, how I actually care for myself and start developing some self-compassion. Because when you don't have, when you've been raised in an environment of neglect, you don't know how to have self-compassion. You don't know how to nurture yourself. You don't know how to take care of yourself. So I found that God was like almost reparenting me in a lot of ways and teaching me basics, right? And he was also teaching me to to journal, to write out feelings, to 
um, pray, to read and study his word, to renew my mind, to develop new habits and practices, to replace all of this victim mentality that I had been living in so that I could become a victor, so I could start feeling more powerful, so I could start trusting Holy Spirit guidance, so I could start really being led by God and obey God and start building a track record with God and a pattern of inspiration versus a pattern of suffering and pain, okay? It was learning to trust God, all right? So I just want to highlight here that, yes, while there can be this instant deliverance, there's still got to be the pattern changes, okay? So first off, you've got to recognize a few things. I know that we've talked about this in Courage Co. In Courage Co., we do uh, a free masterclass every month. We do a free challenge every month. And I also do a guest interview that you get access to. So definitely something, again, if you have not heard of Courage Co., get plugged in there, www.courageco.org. But in our Success Habits Challenge, we talked about patterns specifically in three forms. One, you've got to be able to recognize a pattern, okay? So when you recognize a pattern, especially an unhealthy pattern, then you have awareness. So when that pattern comes up again, you're like, ooh, like, do I want to choose this? Because I was at some point choosing this unconsciously, meaning I didn't intentionally choose this. This is just how I learned to cope. But now that I'm catching it, am I still going to choose it now that I'm awake to it? Okay, is this serving me for real? Got to recognize the pattern before you can make that decision. Then there's pattern utilization. So if I can recognize a pattern, then I can also use a pattern. And there's patterns that serve me like habits and there's patterns that don't. So essentially here, what do I want to reinforce to get the outcome that I desire? Okay, so if I'm going to reinforce my addiction, I'm going to get more pain. All right, but if I'm going to reinforce new habits, better sleep, better eating, serving people, focusing on things to be appreciative of, right? Like if I'm going to start forming new patterns and utilizing new patterns, I'm going to reprogram my being, okay? Then you move into something that's even more powerful, which is pattern creation. And pattern creation is you choose in advance how you're going to show up and you program this, okay? Like no matter what, This is who I'm going to (laughs) be. I'm going to train my being so that in any circumstance, especially uncomfortable ones, I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to know in advance how I'm going to show up because it's decided. I'm already committed to that. So like if so-and-so is like known to act some kind of way, I'm going to expect and just allow this person to be who they are, but I'm not going to be moved or phased by that. And here's what I'm going to do instead. And to prepare to go into this environment, here's how I'm going to take care of myself, right? So picture... Uh, a common one is people going home for the holidays, right? And you can always tell how far you've grown when you encounter people that used to know you, <laughs> right? So when you get put into an environment that often created your triggers and your patterns and your hangups and all the things, right? When you get put back in an environment like that, it's also often very telling. So for, for some people that want to utilize pattern creation in this sense, I still want to go be with these people that I love. I still want to, you know, spend holidays with them, whatever it might be. However, here's how I'm going to do it instead. When these people show up as the, as they do, this is who they are. I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm not going to make that mean anything. I'm not going to let that get under my skin. Here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to stay at a hotel. <laughs> I'm going to give myself my own space. I'm going to make sure that, you know, if you eat your own food and you don't enjoy what's made, I'm going to bring my own food. I'm even going to offer some to other people. I'm going to only have conversations about this. If it drifts into this, here's going to be like my tap out word, or here's how I'm going to shift the conversation. You've got patterns that you create ahead of time so that you can operate in them and really care for yourself. Okay. So there's pattern, uh, pattern awareness, right? Like you've got to be able to recognize a pattern, pattern recognition. Then you have pattern utilization where you're actually choosing how to program your being. These could be your daily habits. I talk about the daily five over in the God's Vibes Mastermind. This is something, it's a tool that so many women in there absolutely love. There's so many strategies and things that we're given all the time, but this daily five truly changes your life. But it's changing your patterning and your programming so that your being can be one that supports you every single day. And it's not like you have to get to a burnout situation to finally take a mental health day, for example. Like you're literally programming what serves you every single day. 
not when you need it most, every single day. And then you're also creating patterns that will help you access your new level, that will help you cope and be prepared to go in uncomfortable and difficult environments. Like you're not going in them hoping for the best, like you're prepared in advance and you decide what you're going to create no matter what, because you decide who you're going to be no matter what. Okay. So you start developing this in advance. You start making these bold moves. So for example, when you decide that, oh yeah, I have noticed that I've had reasons. I can totally justify why I've been thinking like a victim. Okay, like your feelings may be valid, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be the energy, the fuel that you need to create a different reality. And a lot of times when we're a victim, we don't have the energy to change our life. It's just, that's just what it is. Okay, so when you start realizing, ooh, yeah, like I definitely have been thinking like a victim. I've been feeling like a victim. I've totally been showing up powerless in all these situations. Eel. Now I want to do something about it, right? That can be really scary and intimidating, which is why it takes massive courage because every move feels like such a big, bold move. Okay. And when you decide to go from being a victim and from this like self-protection, self-preservation, all of the self-sabotage, and we've got a mixture of it all. We all do. Right. When you decide to start changing from that by choosing something different, you start getting a vision of where you're going. You start understanding the consequences of how you're showing up, you start having a lot of momentum for why it's time to change and now, okay? But some of those things might look like changing your circle. That takes making a bold move because a lot of times the people that were around you when you were a victim aren't going to be the people that support you in becoming a victor, usually not how it works. Like you literally have to let go of all the people that enabled you to be powerless. You've got to remove yourself from an environment that doesn't serve your upgrade. Okay. Because people that want you to stay small because it benefits them are not your people. They're not. They might've helped you feel comfortable. They might've given you some sort of validation in the sense that you had community, but do you, right? Like people that, that just want to see you small or that, that benefit from enabling people pleasing, codependent, small behavior out of you. These are not people that support you. These are people that are hindering your progress and are blocking you from destiny. So a lot of times a bold move is changing your circle. Other times it could be making a decision to move into the future without a safety net. (laughs) And let me tell you, pioneers don't have a plan B. There is no safety net. God is it. Okay, so a bold move might be deciding to leave a dysfunctional work environment that you think that you have to be in that is creating some sort of safety, quote unquote, for you, whether that be provision, whether that be uh, a certain element of comfort and you know what you can expect, but the pain is far outweighing the structure, the the promise, the, the value to your life, right? When you're in a toxic environment, when you're having panic attacks, when you're getting sick, when it's just not a healthy space and you keep choosing it, Because you're afraid of leaping into the unknown without a safety net, what is that costing you, right? A lot of times a bold move is I'm willing to jump even though I don't see what's out here because this ain't it and I can't ignore that anymore. I can't deny what I know anymore because anytime we grieve the Holy Spirit, anytime we ignore our intuition, we suffer, there's a direct correlation, okay? And so it's deciding that I'm not going to put myself through any more unnecessary suffering. I'm going to trust that God is the net, that he has a good plan, that it's already laid out, and then I'm going to walk straight into it when I make this bold move, right? Or sometimes it means forsaking the familiar. That's a bold move, right? Like I can't keep this devil that I know because I'm afraid of what I might encounter out here, right? Like I got I to gotta own what I know, and be willing to move in risk, in discomfort, in faith. Sometimes it's 
releasing or letting go of old self-preservation habits that you know aren't serving you. So I know that I had these personally when dealing with an addiction. I know that I had these personally when recognizing all the ways that I was suffering in relationships because of what I'd learned. I didn't know how to have healthy relationships. I didn't know how to uh, really assert myself in relationship. I didn't know how to just be accepted for who I was in relationship. I thought I just had to make other people happy. You know, that sounded like a good idea. Just give, 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 you know, didn't realize that that's like the taker's dream, right? I didn't realize all the things that I was ignoring or creating a case for that was allowing me to be in very unhealthy relationships. I I really didn't know how to to create a healthy relationship environment and to set boundaries and to walk away or to, you know, have all these non-negotiables. I didn't know how to show up in relationships, right? So I had to really acknowledge that I had learned a lot of bad relationship patterns and recognize what those are and not say, oh, it's just the people I keep choosing, right? Or, oh, it's just because they're all like this, right? Not make it about the other people, but like, what about you is creating this narrative, right? What about you? Because it does take two. What about you is contributing to this, right? Why not start learning some more skills and some better practices in relationships so that you can change the narrative entirely? How about that, right? So for me, bold moves meant leaving toxic relationships for the unknown of creating what a healthy one looks like. Yikes! You know, that's really scary when you don't come from healthy dynamics at all, right? If you don't have family, if you don't have a home base, if you don't have people that like care about you, that check in on you, that really want to know about you and your well-being and invest in you and pour into you and cultivate that relationship, if you don't have that, creating that is really, really interesting, right? But that should not be a reason that it stops you. It just is going to take massive amounts of courage, right? And every step you take on that journey is giving the enemy hell. Every step. And every step is worth it and every step compounds, okay? And then sometimes it also, a bold move is, giving up these lesser masters, right? We all have a master. We all have a master, all right? So we don't always think about that, but we do, all right? Another way to say this, we obey. Whatever we obey, whatever we submit to, whatever we partner with becomes our master. So you might obey the voice of fear. You might obey the addiction. You might obey the dysfunction. You might obey the victim, right? You might obey the helplessness. You might obey the powerlessness. You might obey the drama and the gossip and the chaos and accept that as your reality. But whatever we obey becomes our master. So I say, why not obey God and let him be the master because he is, right? Think about that. Think about it. We are made to be dependent on God, right? We wrestle with this, but if we don't need God, right? If we've got it all the time, I got this, I got this, I'm good, right? We act like that when we're like drowning, right? But if we do that, we won't need God, but we do need God. So there is healthy dependency on God. Maybe not people, right? But there is healthy dependency on God, Okay, so sometimes a bold move is deciding to build a relationship with God, all right? Or dare to trust the master, right, in the unknown. Dare to step out in the unknown and trust God. Put your faith to work, right? As you start relating with God, you start relating with yourself and you start coming into yourself. You start coming into your own, so to speak, and you start reminding hell of who you are in the best ways, right? And you start letting the enemy know that he can't have you and he can't have your stuff and he can't have your future, okay? You start really going into the enemy's camp, okay? You don't just let the enemy come bully you, come beat you up, come take your stuff. Like you start going into his camp, start taking back what is rightfully yours and start taking more territory. And you do that, the more powerful you you become, which is why he doesn't want you to be powerful at all. You start becoming the identity 
of who God, again, form shaped and anointed you to be. Righteous. You're righteous. And it says the righteous are as bold as a lion. So you start actually developing boldness in your character where you make bold decisions. You think bigger, bolder thoughts. You start speaking big, bold prayers, right? And every time you do that, every time you take a bold step, a courageous step into your future, that's going into the enemy's camp. So over here, I talk about how God's vibes matter. It's matching God's energy. If you want to think about it that way, right? But you match his energy. You be bold. You be, right, the person that he formed you to be. You match his image. You match his likeness in the world. And you start getting his results. You start releasing heaven on earth. And your relationship with the creator is the only way, really, the only way, the only reason you can find out why you're created and what he has for you and what he's training you to be a victor for, okay? And the beautiful thing is, is when you start partnering with God, it's the Holy Spirit that starts stirring up the gifts inside of you, that starts helping you get into position, that starts helping you develop this graceful flow in your life. It says out of out of your belly, right? There will flow transformation, breakthrough, victory. That will come out of you, right? But a lot of times we've got to get the stuff that's in the way out of the way to access that. And the way to do that is instead of moving by the stuff, instead of building your life on all the stuff, the pain, the suffering, the chaos, the victim story, right? You get out of that stuff and you move in the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, okay? So you've got to recognize what the pattern of the victim mentality mindset are. Then you can start utilizing the patterning of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, the power of the spirit, the the truth, renewing your mind to the truth that the spirit reveals to you, confirms to you, right? You start having this sound mind. You start operating in power and love, right? That's a very different pattern. And when you start utilizing those patterns, right, then you start becoming powerful and you can start creating different patterns that serve you, okay? And faith, for example, is a pattern, but faith never feels safe. Never. Never. But being in the will of God is the safest place to be. So when you think about a victim mentality, I just want to offer some thoughts to you. What has it been costing you to be a victim in your life? It's been benefiting you in some way. You know, when we play a victim, we we teach people how to show up in our life. We learn to cope with certain things. We let ourselves off the hook from daring greatly. You know, there's there's ways that being a victim has served us. But what is it costing you? To be a victim, to view life that way, to live in those feelings every day. What is that costing you? Think about it. What does your soul know is true when you're not in fear? If you're not a victim, when you actually access that victor mindset, what does your soul know to be true? There's more for you. You've got this dream that you're going to walk out. What's gotten in the way of that? And what will you do instead? What needs to change? What will free you? What will you create? What would you be willing to let go of? What limitation will you stop choosing? It's wild. We create such a great case for excuses, for why things can't happen, for all of our limits. But what if you just did that for your limitlessness? What limitation will you stop choosing? What are you willing to focus on? 
Whatever we focus on grows more in our life. Whatever we appreciate, appreciates. What, what are you willing to appreciate? You know, I found that a lot of times the pain, the things that caused a lot of destruction and trauma, they taught me something. I learned to appreciate what they taught me versus hating and resenting them entirely and living and suffering way longer than I had to. What will you appreciate? What are you willing to give? What no longer serves you? What is totally in alignment with you? A lot of times we remain a victim because it's easy. It's familiar. We know how to show up as a victim. We've mastered that role. We know the narrative. We've seen that movie before. We know exactly. It's predictable. What's harder, what's more challenging, what takes massive amounts of courage is deciding to be the victim. The one that overcomes, the one that breaks through, the one that pioneers something new. Right? It's, it's challenging patterns that we've chosen. At some point, we learn them to cope. And then another time, we start waking up. And when you start realizing your patterns, now you're responsible for them. And then you can utilize patterns that serve you instead. You can replace bad patterning with good, healthy programming and patterning for you. And you can even create patterning of that, which, what you want to step into, right? So with God, we've got the supernatural, limitless one, the sovereign one, the most powerful person in the universe. We've got his patterns that we can tap into and utilize every single day to renew our mind, to start feeling better. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. (laughs) Imagine if we lived in that more often. You can program that into your being. You can create that. I don't have to wait to feel good. I can activate it now. I can choose to appreciate. I can choose to be joyful. I can choose to praise. I can choose to pray. I can choose. I can choose. And my choosing makes me powerful. My choosing not to be a victim already makes me a victor. My choosing not to succumb to circumstances or things that are happening around me or even the crazy behavior of other people makes me a victor. Right? Who does your future require you to become or to just even be today? Being a victim is not going to bring your victory. Learning how to be victorious, to activate that being, to start showing up as a victor does, to start doing things that a victor does, thinking things, speaking things, feeling things, creating it requires responsibility, it requires courage, but it will change your entire life in your entire direction. And when you want to break up with the victim mentality, you want to divorce it, <laughs> you want to marry the victor mentality. So you don't want to just get rid of something without replacing it. You want to replace it with a victor mentality. But that requires training. That's not going to happen by your default, right? Like just like for me, for example, if a relationship was removed, yikes, that person's no longer there. My way of showing up in the world with that person in my life is no longer there. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to learn relationship differently. You're going to learn how to relate with God. You're going to learn how to relate with yourself. You're going to go through a new training and a healing, and then you'll do relationship better with the one God has for you, right? It's being willing to see things differently. It's being willing to go on those journeys that are being presented to you, even if you don't know how they're going to go. There's a trust involved here, a courageous, bold move involved here, but God meets you there every time. And every time you make these bold moves, you make these courageous decisions, you give the enemy hell. It's payback time on the enemy. I know for me personally, being beat up your whole life, right? You start developing this righteous anger for the enemy. Get your hands off my life. Get your hands off my stuff. Like I'm, It's time that you recognize who you mess with. You have no idea. Give me back my stuff and I'm taking what's mine and I'm taking my territory. I'm going to be your worst nightmare, (laughs) right? Every day I wake up, I'm going to make the enemy pay 
but I'm going to do it with love for God. I'm going to do it by keeping my love on versus turning into a hateful, resentful human. Right? I'm going to devote my life to purpose and the things that I'm passionate about and developing gifts and stepping out in those. Despite, you know, everything that comes with that. I'm going to trust God. But I'm willing to lay down being a victim, even though life may have shown me that that was the option. I'm willing to let that go. I'm willing to see things differently so I can have a totally different life experience. I can have healthy relationships. I can operate in my gifts and my talents. I can give my life and my energy to things that deeply matter. I can live in energy that fuels me and that impacts people for the better. It's a choice. So I want to encourage you today. What would divorcing your victim mentality bring to your life? Because when we close a door to things that don't serve us, we open a door, we fling it wide open. And like a vortex, we draw everything to us that we've been pushing away. But you've got to let go boldly, courageously of what doesn't serve you and start choosing every day what does. Choose what does serve you, what has the greatest impact, and go all in on it. No looking back, unapologetically, and watch what God will do and how he'll change your story. All right, friends, I hope this message blessed you. Make sure you get plugged into Courage Co. We've got new challenges, new masterclasses, new interviews coming up. It's a beautiful space. We actually have a prayer call tomorrow morning. We have these every other Wednesday at 8 a.m. Central Time. Those are free. You can get on those calls for prophetic encouragement, for prayer, for covering. You can re-listen to them as well. We keep them available inside Courage Co. So make sure that you get plugged in. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please go ahead and do that. A lot of times that is the best way that this message can get into the mind, into the heart of those that need to hear it most when they need to hear it most. So your subscribing your messages, your ratings, your encouragement changes so much more than you think. And it's a little effort for you. It takes 60 seconds. And if you would right now, when you subscribe to the podcast, when you rate it, when you review it, I also send you the God's Vibes Matter devotional, which is a 30-day devotional that helps you level up your relationship with God and really deepen your relationship with God. I'll give that to you for free. So if you would go ahead and do that, it would mean the world. It also lets me know who is here, which makes me so happy. And you'll get a free gift. You can claim that over at julianapage.com under the podcast page. All right, everybody. Until next time, stay blessed. Listen, if you are not plugged into Courage Co. yet, what are you doing? Courage Co. is a faith-based community off social media that you can access from your phone or your desktop literally from anywhere. It is a safe place and a sacred space for you to invest in and live your most courageous and impactful story. You can join us for free for prayer calls and challenges, for a monthly subscription where we have monthly masterclasses, or the God's Vibes Mastermind where you will get live master life coaching at a price that you won't get anywhere else, 12 weeks of content that we will go through together or you can navigate at your own pace. You'll have lifetime access to that. A community of women doing this alongside of you, a workbook and so many other materials to help you on your journey. And I just want you to imagine for a second, having the courage, clarity, and focus to achieve anything you desire, walking into any situation, fully confident, knowing you have everything you need to succeed, embracing challenges and overcoming obstacles with grace and ease, feeling only love and compassion for others, no matter how they may have hurt you in the past. Standing up for what you believe in and taking unstoppable action to create the kind of world you want to live in. You're in the right place to take your next step on your journey. When you plug into the God's Vibes Mastermind, I'll teach you how to identify and eliminate the self-limiting beliefs and habits that are stopping you from getting the results you want. 
I'll teach you how to heal old wounds that have negatively impacted your self-image and self-esteem for far too long. I'll show you how to dismantle the story of who you are and what you can or cannot do in the world. I'll help you expand your consciousness from fear-based limitation to love and compassion and service to the world. I'll help you vanquish the inner enemies that are stopping you from being all that you can be. Release your victimhood and reclaim your power. Develop a aligned mindset and habits to boost your productivity and results. Gain deeper awareness of your own inner light and divinity and achieve the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self-mastery needed to achieve any goal. You will learn how to think the way God formed, shaped, and anointed you to think and succeed the way he always intended and show up in any situation as the most powerful person in the room, no matter what challenges might appear on your path. If this sounds like something that you want to be a part of, I want to invite you to join the God's Vibes Mastermind. You can get plugged into it over at Courage Co. You can access Courage Co. at any level at www.courageco.org. Together, we will awaken your inner warrior spirit and unleash your capacity to achieve any goal you can imagine. You will become an example of what's possible with God.